The effect of the ketogenic diet must be rigidly controlled. Each meal is pre-calculated and all foods are weighed on a grand scale. Like, it's difficult. Well, is it more difficult than watching your kid have 100 seizures a day? I've been teaching and administering the ketogenic diet here at Hopkins since 1949 to well over 500 patients. I've never seen a parent win, lose, or draw that regrets having given it a try. tell you all a true story. I was born in Avery County in North Carolina, a small community. My brother had taught me into taking the secretary, of course, because his wife had, and she did so well. But after the first semester, I changed my program into a nutrition program. God was with me preparing me for what I could do later, which I wouldn't have been able to do if I had kept up with the secretary, of course, which I couldn't stand. <laughs> it wasn't for me, and I knew it. I didn't even tell my parents. I was fortunate enough to be accepted at the Hopkins Hospital School of Dietetics. That's where I learned. I graduated then the fall of 1949, and I was asked to stay on in the dietary department. I was assigned to the nutrition clinic, and our job was to give diet instructions, teach diets, diabetic diets, low-calorie diets, low-purating diets, whatever the patient needed. And that's where I learned about the ketogenic diet and met Dr. Livingston. He was just for the ketogenic diet. That was his main purpose in life. He started the treatment of the diet immediately when he came to Hopkins. That was in 1934. So the diet was in practice from then on. Some of the dietitians would say, oh, that awful diet, uh, because it's so restrictive, not realizing how effective it was. Now, our body normally burns carbohydrate for energy. On the ketogenic diet, since the carbohydrate is so limited, if the body can't get energy from the carbohydrates, it turns over to burning fat. Ketone bodies are formed that control the seizures. If you burn coal or wood, you have ashes. When we burn fat, you have ketones. I thought, my goodness, you know, how can this be? And you learned how it could be. It wasn't a diet you could just read out of a book and everybody follow it. It was individualized. And that's what the dietitian did. And we had classes every day that they were in the hospital. And your meat can be beef, lamb, dill, pork, liver, fish. As they start the diet, they simmer off from the medication slowly and it brings about a more alert child. They become alert, like you're alive and alert and happy. The children called it my magic diet. I do well because I'm on my magic diet. And that's one of the things that sort of helps them uh, stay with it. It's magic. They're producing magic. And who wants to have seizures if you don't have to? We were seeing, at one time, five or six each week. We may have seen a hundred in one year at one time, seeing someone come in with seizures and going home with a smile. The joy you can't imagine. I retired in 1990. Then I was kept on as a private consultant for the next eight years. I was just doing it because I enjoyed doing it. I knew how to do it, and it was necessary. 
When I first met Jim, he had brought Charlie into the hospital to start the diet. And Charlie was, I went into their room and Charlie was lying on a mat in the floor. I don't know whether he could even sit up or not at that point. It was terrible. And Jim was lying on the mat with him with his arms around him. Charlie. He spent over $100,000 in one year going from one doctor to another, buying medication, having as many as 100 seizures a day. Once he came to Hopkins and started the diet, his seizures disappeared in two or three days. All the doctors he went to never mentioned the ketogenic diet. He had to find out himself. And so, of course, after two or three days and no seizures, after all he had gone up with, he was mad at the whole world that somebody, a diet as good as this, was not known, and even doctors never mentioned it. You know, th this didn't have to happen. 90% of these seizures didn't have to occur. How it could possibly be that that diet and its success rate at Johns Hopkins has remained a secret is absolutely incredible to me. And what really makes it tragic is the amount of kids who have suffered because of that. The day he left the hospital just praising the diet, he began to hold seminars, seminars after seminars, where doctors, nurses, and whoever he wanted to would come to learn about the diet. Spread throughout the world. Thank you for allowing me to appear before you today. I mean, he's so loving and giving, serving others. And he's doing it to this day. Every minute of his life is helping somebody learn about the diet. He just it feels that way about it because it restored his son. And his son is in his 20s now, has graduated from college. He's a musician, he plays the piano, he's healthy and strong. The last seminar that I attended was about three or four years ago. My grandson went with me to carry my suitcase and to keep me on track. We flew out to Chicago, Illinois for the uh, Charlie Foundation that Jim Abrams was hosting. Meryl Streep was one of the attendees there because they were celebrating one of the films that he made to bring attention to the ketogenic diet, First Do No Harm. We got to meet hundreds of dietitians from all around the world. They had so much respect for her and were thanking her for everything that she, everything that she's done. She was the celebrity that day because she really was. She's one of the people that brought, you know, brought this diet to the forefront. Everybody knows about it because of her. She's a hero. She's a hero to the whole world for this. It really meant a lot to be there to see that. My chaperone. <laughs> the diet could have been lost forever if Millie Kelly had not stuck with it for four decades, devoting even her retirement years to keeping a simple miracle cure alive. If Millie hadn't been around all these years, I think the diet would have been lost. Gone. That's how important she is. <laughs> 